Hello and welcome. Today we are exploring JavaScript modules that help you organize your code into reusable files. Let's get started. Hello and welcome. Today we're talking about JavaScript modules. JavaScript modules were introduced with ES6 in 2015. Before we start typing some code, we need to cover some basics about modules. They're usually used to export different sections of code from one file to another. And of course, after that code is exported, you import it into another file. And these sections are usually functions or classes, and we'll have examples of both today. And to do this in a dev environment, you need to have a local server running. You can't just load your files from, say, a Windows directory and have modules work. So let's look at an example of that. So I have the page open here, and you can see I have loaded it directly from a folder on Windows. And you will get an error like this. This is a cores policy error, and that is cross-origin requests. And they're only supported for protocol schemes like HTTP. And really, that just means we need to have a server running. So you can see I have a server running here. And this has our local IP address, 127.0.0.1, and the port number, and then the HTML file. And I'm doing that with the live server extension in Visual Studio Code. And you can see right here, it's running on port 5500. And you can add the live server extension if you're not already using it by typing live server in Visual Studio Code in the extensions and finding it right here. And of course, you can install it and then enable or disable. And it's pretty much as easy as clicking a button to launch the server. And after you've launched it, of course, you can click it again to close it. And that will get you running with a local server for development. And so that is what you need to do to use modules. Also, looking at the HTML file in your script tag, here we go, where we load our main JS file, you also need to have type, the type attribute, type equals module. And that lets JavaScript know we're going to be using modules. Now, when you enable this type or module, it does a couple of things. One, it automatically implies or applies the defer keyword. So you don't need the defer keyword. This is when you say go ahead and load the DOM and then go ahead and load the JavaScript. So in the past we have loaded our script tag maybe right below or right before the uh, closing body tag and that would let the rest of the page load first or we have put it up here and instead of having this module type we have had the keyword defer, which accomplishes the same thing. But what you want to do now is just have type equals module. That will not only tell JavaScript that we're going to use modules, but it will also say use defer at the same time without you having to add the defer keyword. The other thing using modules does is immediately applies strict mode to your JavaScript. And you could do that by typing use strict in quotes at the top of your file like this anytime you wanted. However, by using modules, even without typing this in your file, strict mode is applied in your JavaScript. Okay, with that ha housekeeping out of the way, let's go ahead and make a module. So what we wanna do is create another JavaScript file. And I'm going to create one called guitars.js. And in guitars.js, I'm going to add a few functions. Very quickly, we'll have a play guitar function and I'll create arrow functions here. And this one's just going to return playing guitar. After the play guitar function, we'll have one called shredding. This would be like loud rock guitar. And we'll return shredding some licks when you're playing cool stuff on guitar, they're called guitar licks. And then, at least in rock guitar, eh, there's country licks too, probably some other styles as well. And then we'll go with plucking, which is kind of the opposite of shredding. This would be more like plucking the strings with your fingers or something like that. And we'll say plucking the strings. So now we have three functions in our guitar JS. And we can export these functions for use in another JavaScript file. And 
every file can have, or every module can have one default export. So we can say export default, and we'll choose our play guitar function. And now it is the default export for this guitars.js file. But we can also export the other functions, and we can do that by using curly braces, saying shredding and plucking. And this will export all the functions that we've just created. But this is just one way of exporting those functions. We can also do this in line when we create the functions. And that would be done, I'll go ahead and comment these exports out. That would be done by adding it directly in line with where we export the function. Now here I'm going to use the function keyword. I've export default function And I'll go ahead and put that back because that's how JavaScript likes to do it when you have the default export. However, here I can just say export and go ahead and have const and export plucking. Now we have exported all of those in line and we get the same result. Again, play guitar is the default export for this file and then shredding and plucking are also exported. So now that we've shown how to export different functions, let's go ahead and import those into our main.js file. Now we can import the default that we set in our previous guitars.js file simply by doing this, typing import and then name the default function. Let's play guitar from, now I have dot slash, and then you can see guitars pops up as an example here in VS Code, so I'll just choose that, put JS after it, and that is a relative path. If we eliminated the dot, that would be an absolute path. I always do it with the dot for the relative path. Okay, so we're importing play guitar from our guitars.js file, and then I can log to the console our function, play guitar, I'll save that, and we get playing guitar in the console. That is the default export. Now, what about the other exports? We have shredding and plucking. So we can import and then use curly braces. And I can specify shredding, and I can specify plucking, and then say from, once again, dot slash, there's the guitars file. I'll save that now. We'll do a couple of more console logs just to make sure those functions work as expected. And we'll change this to shredding. Whoops, didn't type shredding correctly. There we go. And then of course, plucking, finger style guitar. Save that. And now we've got all three in the console. Now we can rename these functions. And this is important because say you're working on a team and two of you create functions with the same name. Well, you wouldn't want to import those into the same project. There would definitely be confusion. So let's import shredding as shred. And let's import plucking as uh, finger picking. Kind of a longer name, but it's descriptive at least. So we'll put shred here. And then here we'll put finger picking. We save and we get the same result. So you can rename those functions as you import them. You can actually rename them as you export them, but doing it as you import them is probably much more common. Now let's look at another way to import these functions. I'll get rid of the two imports we have, and we're going to import all, and then we have to name all. So I'm going to name that guitars, and then it will be from, of course, the guitars JS file. Now what happens when we import all as guitars? Well, you have to treat that whole namespace, guitars, more like you would a class. So in that instance, I guess to call this function, we kind of call it like we do a method. We're going to use dot notation and we'll say guitars dot play guitar. But we're going to have a problem and I'll show you what that is too. Let me save this and just apply it to these others. Now, of course, we haven't renamed the others, and they're in 
lies, therein lies, part of the problem. And this problem is, this was plucking. This problem is we can't name these things. We just imported all. So they have the names they're given in the previous file. And we did name this play guitar, but watch what happens when I save this. We got an error. Guitars dot play guitar is not a function. Why is that? Let's look. It's actually named default. That's what we've exported. So if we do it this way and we have a default function we're exporting, you would have to name default to call that default function. And now they all work. And that seems kind of weird, doesn't it? So I would recommend if you're doing this, import all with a namespace, maybe just not having a default. And then we'll save this, and of course we'll have an error again. We could come back and name our play guitar function. And now it works as intended. So you don't want to have a default unless you're ready to just name the default. And that's kind of confusing because what if you imported two files and they both had a default, for example? Of course, that would be differentiated by the namespace, but you would still be calling two things named default, which could kind of get confusing. So think about all of those things as you export and import and rename things. It is oftentimes easier to import all but then the names in the, in the other file that you're exporting from really have to line up because you're not renaming them when you import all. Let's look at one more example of imports and exports. This time we're going to create a class. So we'll create another new file and we'll call this user.js. Now in this file, let's create a class. So we'll say export default class user. And we need a constructor, our class, and our constructor is going to accept an email and a name. And we'll use the email as an ID. So we'll say this dot underscore ID equals email. And then we'll have this dot underscore name equals name. And now let's add a method to our class. And this method is going to be called greeting. And we will return template literal string, we'll say, hi, my name is, and now we can put this dot underscore name right there in our string, and then we'll finish that. And we're pretty much done with our class. So we've got the user class, it's got a constructor that accepts an email and a name, and it has one method where it returns a greeting. So now we'll come back to the main JS file and we'll import this class. And we'll say import user, because it's the default, we don't need to use curly braces, from dot slash, and I've got user.js. Okay, now that we've imported that, let's go ahead and create an instance of the class. So I'll start a variable called me, and I'll say me equals new user. Oh yeah, we need to pass in, I'll just say email at email.com and pass in my name, Dave. And now we've passed in the parameters and we've got our new user so we can log to the console. Let's take a look at that new uh, object we've created, the new user object named me. And you can see it here in the console. It's user as the underscore ID equals email at email.com and the underscore name equals Dave. Why do we use the underscores? If uh, you've watched my video on classes, you know the underscores used in the constructor mean, hey, don't access these properties without a getter and a setter. Usually that's what that means. They're intended to be private, even though of course in JavaScript, they're not really private. However, private variables, um, I'm sorry, not private variables, private properties, are being added to JavaScript as we speak. So that may change very shortly. So we've logged that. Let's go ahead and log the greeting as well. And we would do me.greeting. And we can see we've imported our 
class just fine and we've created a new object with it and that object we can log the whole object to the console and we've logged the method greeting that works as intended. As I mentioned, imports and exports became available in JavaScript with ES6 in 2015. So let's look at what support we have for that at caniuse.com. I'll close DevTools and let's type in module. And there we go, JavaScript modules, dynamic import, loading JavaScript modules dynamically using the import syntax. And you can see there's good support at 92% or even almost 92.5% in the US. Now that's not 100%, but that's pretty good. It doesn't go clear back to Internet Explorer, and I hope you never have to do that, although occasionally some of us have to for job requirements. Um, also, this UC browser for Android has about 1%, 1.24 globally, and it doesn't support it. But overall, 92% is pretty good. However, usually modules are used in a project, and I can go back to where we were with our live server. Here we go, back to DevTools. And that's as expected. Okay, so usually modules would be used in a project with a tool called Babel that can transfer JavaScript, like the newer code, the newer modern JavaScript can uh, essentially translate that over or transpile that into older JavaScript syntax that will work in older browsers. And this is oftentimes used along with a bundler like Webpack or Parcel. And those things bundle your code and can use Babel along the way to make it into older JavaScript that older browsers can read. And we'll bundle it all into one file. So they'll read all of your modules and package it all together in a big bundle. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.